wire to board. Should be simple, right? I've got a wire, I've got my PCB, and I want to hook them up. So I could bust out the old soldering iron. I've got mad skills there, let me tell you. Get that metal to just the right temp. Dang, cooked it. Okay, I've got another board here somewhere, and I'll try again. Or I could just design my board with a connector on it and terminate my wires with a plug. That'll make manufacturing happy. Okay, not at all. And it will cause more cost in my bomb and more stuff to pick in place and solder. I'd really like a better option. Let's see, uh, duct tape. No, I could definitely use some help here. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Luckily, I've got Tom Anderson here from AVX, and he's going to tell me about some really cool new easy solderless solutions for connecting wires to boards and boards to boards with a little help from AVX's stripped family of connectors. Finally. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about the stripped family of connectors from AVX. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Okay, so Tom, let's start from the beginning. What are the bedrock basics of connectors? Well, it's kind of funny. Since the beginning of time, people have struggled with attaching wires to boards, but the basic fundamentals are they have to be reliable, the process needs to be repeatable, and they oftentimes have to be repairable. And then if you break those down into more of a block diagram, the basic way is to no connector, you hand solder the wires to a board, and that gives you the lowest cost solution, but you don't get the volume, but you also get process variations which can cause long-term failures out in the field. The traditional method is using a connector which gets surface mount soldered onto a board. And with this, you get the repeatable process, the reliability of a two-piece connector solution, and you eliminate the long-term failures out in the field. Now, I know you guys at AVX specialize in unique connectors. Has anyone asked you for something different? Oh, yes, all the time. Ourselves and our customers, all the engineers are always scratching their heads looking for a better solution. And that's where a lot of the connectors are developed across the board. The question here, though, is they're trying to look for something in between, something that's not a connector but is a connector. And that's been the big challenge because historically you either use one or you don't use one. Okay, so what was AVX able to come up with? We actually came up with a, the in-between part, a naked connector. And what we did was redefine the traditional thought process, and we concepted a connector without a, an insulator. So we basically stripped the insulator off of the contact, and that created the final product. All right, Tom. So if this is so revolutionary, how exactly did your customers react? <laughs> Surprise would be one of my first words. You know, the first question is, could a single standalone contact be developed and used? And when we first started going out with our first prototypes, I'd place them in front of a customer and he'd look at me and look up at me and say, can I use this? And I, I said, yes. And there was that just because nobody had ever seen this. With UL, we, we'd approached UL and they didn't have anything in their specifications for qualifying a connector without an insulator. But through the whole process of education, we were able to explain and prove through testing that with the proper materials and the proper design, a single contact could function by itself. Okay, cool. Let's get into some details. Okay. So the best material on the market for a contact is beryllium copper. Primarily it's used where you have small contacts, where you need high spring force characteristics, minimal fatigue over time and temperature. So this is the primary material of choice at the top end. Phosphor bronze would come next, 
and this is slightly lower in the scale, but it still offers high spring characteristics and good fatigue resistance over time and temperature. But traditionally, you have to have a slightly larger contact system. So we weigh out the size of the contact, the shape, the performance we're trying to achieve, and we will select one of these two materials. Once we have the materials, then we still have to create the design. So we go through several FEAs and stress analysis and simulate what, how this product is going to function out in the field. Once we're done with that, we know how the contact is going to react. And then the last thing is just the plating. So depending on the environment, we'll use either gold or tin. Now, Tom, where do you see this being used? It's across a lot of applications, the broad industrial market. We're in transportation applications. Basically, each of these products has been tested to severe automotive levels of temperature shock and vibration. So they fit well within the transportation market, the medical market, It's really that fact of bridging the cost gap between hand soldering and a connector. So anybody that's looking for a a reliable solution at a lower cost or a lower profile in board-to-board or wire-to-board connections, this would be an ideal candidate for them. Okay, so from a cost perspective, how does this all fit in? Well, this next chart shows the value chain where you've got hand soldering on the entry level. And like I said, this is very simple. It takes a lot of assembly time and there's process variations inherent in this process because people can't sit there and solder wires for eight hours a day consistently. And that's what you get out of a one piece or a two piece connector solution. So really we bridge that gap between soldered, hand soldering and connectorized solution. Now, can you give me some examples of the type of connectors we're talking about? Sure, sure. Probably the first one we developed was around insulation displacement technology. This has been out there for 35 plus years. We've had multiple products ourselves. And the unique thing about IDC is is it's one of the few contact systems that you can get a true cold welded connection. And in simple terms, that just means it's ultra-reliable. It's not affected by that temperature shock, vibration. You can even pot or overmold these contacts or the connectors because the potting connect get inside of the connection point. And that's shown in a couple of the cross-sectional views on my slide here. The top picture on the stranded wire shows where we actually deform each of the individual strands and you get a good metal-on-metal connection. Or in the lower picture on the solid wire, you can see where we actually create created the little cat ears there where we've actually extruded or moved the copper wire as it was pressed down into the body of the contact. And termination is very simple. You present the wire over one of the strip contacts. You can either use a hand or assembly tool, machine tool to bring it down, press it into place. There's no stripping and you've got a final connection. The other common contact would be our poke comb, and this is you strip the wire, you stick it in, and we have multiple contacts that will handle anywhere from 12 to 26 gauge and up to 20 amps, and the contacts then provide the wire guide feature. You've got dual beam opposing beams that give you the contact force you need, and that's what gives you the capturing of the wire and the reliability with the opposing beams to hold it in tight connection during its use. This just shows another example of that, how you can strip a wire and just with a contact that's surface mounted onto a board and just press the wire in and you've got a complete connection. In the poke comb, it's very simple. You can twist and basically unscrew the wire to take out if you need to replace it. Okay, cool. Now, what other products are you looking at other than IDC and poke comb? Well, since the product first got out there, and we started talking to engineers and they started using the product, their minds started thinking. Well, then we'd get the questions, what can you make this strip contact or can you help me on this application? And so that's when our wheels started turning. We started to say, yeah, we can, yeah, we can. So today we have 11 or 12 strip products already on the market and this roadmap kind of shows a little bit more of the history or where we're going in a just a conventional tab and spring clip type system. The IDC is also very, very good with enameled magnet wire because the IDC can pierce through the coating. It doesn't need any special prep. So basically, it's just an extension of the next question our customer or next application our customer brings to us. Okay, cool. So Tom, can you summarize your main points for me? 
Yeah. So really, just simpler is better. And that's really what we've come up with. We found a way to, from the ground up is to design a simple contact that's cost effective, has a low profile. We make several connectors that are based off these contact technologies. So when a customer does come to us, we just look at, can we take an existing connector and develop a strip version of it? But like I said, the key is, is it's all based off of reliability. So it's starting with a proven contact system and the materials and processes to make it work. Excellent. I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Tom. Thank you for having me. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find more information about AVX's stripped family of connectors. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. Can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube. Keyword EE Journal.